Hello and welcome back to On The Couch with Nikki where I bring you experts for expats. This episode is brought to you by Expat Dental whose dentists are trained in Australia, America and England. So who's with me on the couch today? I have Heather Barnard, an expat living in Singapore who with a family history of breast cancer chose to have a double mastectomy to reduce her risks. Let's have a chat to her about how she navigated this from a medical perspective and as living as an expat in Singapore. Hi Heather, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your story. Can you walk everybody through how this unfolded? Um, my story started when I was actually in sixth grade and my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer and I had to watch her go through a very short but very harsh treatment and she ended up passing away my freshman year of high school when I was 13. I had always grown up with that fear in my head of replaying photos of my mom and memories of my mom and yeah. what she went through and I was just waiting um, as a 13 year old, 14 year old, 15 year old, am I going to get breast cancer? So it was always in my mind. What were you told at that time? Did somebody guide you through, even from a medical perspective? For me, it was just your mother had breast cancer. There was no talk as to whether or not you will. Is it hereditary? What's, what's going to happen? Um, it was just um, treating her and dealing with that moment, mm. but no follow-up for me. Now I have two perspectives because I have the children and I couldn't imagine them not having answers. Yes. It wasn't until I had had my first child that I started thinking I really need to do something about this because my grandmother was still alive at the time. Yeah. So she was able to go get the test for the BRCA1 and 2 gene. She came positive. So we knew then that they could identify which mutation it was. It was the BRCA1 gene. Mm -hmm. From there, they were then able to assume my mother had it since she had breast cancer. They tested me. So if you have someone else in your family that can get tested first that has had breast cancer, yes. they can identify it. Not only is the test cheaper, but they know exactly where to look for the mutation. Mm. So I had the test and I was positive for the BRCA1 gene. And if you are positive, is that a fait accompli that you will get breast cancer? When you have the BRCA1 gene, your chances increase significantly. Mm. Mine was 84%. Hi. So it's, it's a huge mm. difference. Um, and um, it's, it's one that once I found that out, there was no other option then for me to have a mastectomy. I didn't want that risk. Once I was done having, I have three children. Once I was done having three children who are all two years apart, I was then ready to start my MRIs and my mammograms. I met with my doctor here and he was ready to go from the get-go, the first meeting. And he said, I can't believe you've waited this long. You know, there's so many options for you. Um, and so I've been doing the monitoring. Like I said, that was one option, but the second option is to do the preventive mastectomy. And then you can choose to do reconstruction. Obviously you don't have to. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted the reconstruction. We packed up the family for a summer and we lived in the States for our summer vacation. Wow. Difficult decision to make because as you said before, there was always a reason to maybe delay things or, or put it off and there's not really a time that you must do it. It's not like your appendix has burst, let's rush you in, we have to right. do it now. It's up to you to decide, okay, I'm ready to do this. One of the big questions is, when do I do this? I, I'm 23, I'm 28, I'm 35, but when do I do it? When's the right time? Would you have done it pre-children? Do you advise people to do it pre-children? You waited till after all of yours. The factor is, is how important is breastfeeding to someone and that's really yeah. personal and you can't tell someone you know you'll regret it if you don't or yep. I can't believe you didn't. The body part we're talking about are breasts mm -hmm. so it's different to an arm or a leg. As a woman mm -hmm. I think a lot of people would want to know how did you reconcile that being such an intricate part of the female anatomy. Right. For me, I had already formed a dislike relationship with my breasts. I didn't want them there. They were trying to hurt me. Isn't that interesting? Wow. So I, I never I never liked them. So if, it was mm. just very easy for me to say goodbye and be completely happy with whatever was happening on the other side. Luckily, once you've had a mastectomy, most insurances will cover any aesthetic follow-ups. How often do you still have to have the intensive testing now that this is done? What's the medical regime for you? So for me, life has gotten a lot better. Mm -hmm. Once you have the surgery, it's recommended every three years. So there's a couple different reconstruction surgeries you can have. Um, one is called DEEP, 
and it's a deep flap and they take your natural tissue and skin from your stomach area and they will reconstruct a breast. So you have your own tissue and it's more natural, it's warm, it is like your own body. Then you can have expander surgery. So you have the mastectomy and they put an inflatable expander in mm -hmm. and that's to make room to stretch your tissue to make room for the implant. I chose direct to implant and so in that sense you're, you, you can't go bigger because they make the pocket based on what they took out. Mm -hmm. So they put the same size implant in that my breast was before. And that was it. So my scars are very minimal. They're actually in the crease. You can't even see them. Um, everything looks normal. That's amazing. And how's your relationship with your body now? Great. So it's even <laughs> um, better than it was yeah, before. Yeah. I am, and you know, I was a mom. I nursed three kids. And yeah. I was aging. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> things weren't where they used to be. Okay. Um, so I was really happy. Is so. the procedure similar to somebody who goes for aesthetic reasons to get an increase? Well, the major difference is, is you are taking out every bit of tissue. Yeah. So there's nerve involvement. You might, you lose sensitivity. Um, they're, they're taking out all the tissue from basically here to here and here to here. So is there any feeling at all or is it just um, nothing? I have regained sens sensitivity, I guess you could say. You have numb spots and that's normal. Yeah. Um, because they work so closely to the nerves and, and they have to to get as many cells out as they want. Can you wear a bikini? Yes, absolutely. You can. I can because my scars with the surgery I chose are just in the crease under the breast. So everything is hidden. So people w wouldn't know? They would not know. Nobody knows. Okay. No. Is there any sort of a mastectomy where it's very obvious or people would know? If you're, so ladies that have had breast cancer, mm. those mastectomy scars would be more, more noticeable because it's a more invasive surgery. But you can do 3D nipple tattoo now, which look amazing. Um, so there is that route. 3D tattoo. Mm. <laughs> Nipple sensitivity. Um, so without giving too much information, <laughs> <laughs> they're pretty much perky all the time because of the surgery. Um, yeah. But sensation wise, it's very minimal. What's the norm? So mm. mine, you would never know on the outside unless I showed you the scar. You would never know. So for you mm. going through what you went through as a teenager, so distressing and now as you said you're a mother you've got your own children do you have any daughters i do i you do too. how did you explain to your children about the surgery and what was going on i tried my best to explain it to them without giving them fear they understand my advocacy they understand my journey they understand that i have a blog they understand that people reach out to me and i work with my doctor very closely back home mm. um, we we wrote a book together we um, he developed an app and i'm helping him you know as, as a feeding member of an advocate for a patient side to that. And yeah. They know I'm doing all this and I think they're still coming to terms with what does this mean for me, mm -hmm. which is still hard. They understand it's a gene. They understand men and women both have the BRCA1 and 2 gene. They understand that they all have a 50% chance of getting it. Um, I think that's a misconception that men don't think they have to deal with this, but they actually can get yes. the gene. You've written a book. I have. Can you show us your book, please? I can. <laughs> I wrote this book and it's Why is Mommy Having Surgery? She Looks Okay to Me. I wrote this based off the conversation we had in telling my kids about the surgery. I felt it was important because there's nothing out there that helps kids yeah, understand this. It's fantastic. Mm. That's awesome. Where can people where can people get this book? It's Just hold it on up again. Amazon. Yeah. Um, so you can find it on any of the main Amazon channels. What age can people be tested? They recommend 18. Yeah, you had a family history, so obviously this was top of mind. Most women need to know nowadays they need to have regular checks, they need mm -hmm. to self-check. At what point do people need to have an MRI, for example? If you know that you have family history of breast cancer, yes. then there's probably an indicator that something's going on. But if you don't have a, if you have a history, you just start off with the... You would start at the age, the recommended age, I think is 40, to start with a mammogram, and you would just yeah. have your regular yearly, yearly testing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. For those that are in the situation mm -hmm. that, that you were in, there is a family history. There's so much more available to them now. What, where can they go? What can they do? There's a brand new app out and it's called The Breast Advocate. It'll do a quick profile for you when you log on. This is an app for people who are going to 
be having the surgery? This is for anyone that has breast cancer or the BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene. It can be a supporter. So if your husband doesn't know what's going on or your partner, mm. they can go get answers as well. It is for anyone that has anything to do at any stage. So maybe you haven't even been tested yet, but you feel like something's wrong. You have a history of breast cancer in the family. Yeah. You can go on here, get guidance. What questions do I ask? What kinds of doctors should I be seeing? Um, Isn't that amazing? What's the name of the app? The Breast Advocate. It's medically backed, so it's not just Facebook or Twitter and you don't know where the source is coming from. Yeah. It's nice to have a place to go. That's amazing. So an additional part of being BRCA1 or BRCA2 positive, you have an ovarian cancer risk. It's advised to get your ovaries taken out. As if you're not going through enough. <laughs> Let's yeah. take out your ovaries as well. <laughs> right, and it puts you in immediate menopause. So I oh. had, most people will do the ovarectomy first. It's called an ovarectomy, and they'll do that first, and then they'll choose to have the mastectomy. Wow. Um, so they're done having children. They say, okay, let's get rid of the ovaries. Um, ovarian cancer is the silent killer. It's hard to know the symptoms. It's hard to know if you have it. And so it typically, uh, people don't find out till it's too late. Yeah very aggressive so it's another thing that women need to be aware of I think you're doing an incredible service to women and in informing them about this and coming on the couch and doing everything that you're doing writing your book I wish you best of health thank you. and thank you again breast health is so important for women and for men make sure you get regular examinations with your GP self-check and mammograms if you're above 40 if you do want any further information on this, reach out to all the services that are available. There's plenty out there for you now, and I wish you the best of health. Thanks everyone.